all government spending is technically the government issuing new money. A lot of it is actually not printed. Most money issued by the government is issued electronically in terms of payments and, and wire transfers to contractors and government employees and so on. So the, the issue of printing money is, uh, or, or the, the use of the term printing money is designed rhetorically to scare people into thinking about those wheelbarrows in Weimar Republic, Germany, and that caused hyperinflation. Um, but what caused hyperinflation in Weimar Republic? It was a shortage of productive capacity. It was the allies taking 40% of Germany's productive capacity and forcing the country to pay reparations for the war. And that caused massive hyperinflation because there wasn't enough productive capacity to handle all of that demand that was imposed on the German economy. Zimbabwe's hyperinflation, the same thing. Productive capacity in, in farming and agriculture dropped by 50%. So you immediately have food shortages and prices going through the roof and you know cross-border trafficking taking advantage of the higher prices and fueling the, the hyperinflation. Venezuela's hyperinflation, it started with the U.S. sanctions that shut down 90% of the economy, which was the oil industry. The sanctions targeted the productive capacity, no spare parts for the oil industry, so the no production, so no income for the whole country. And you immediately have fuel shortages, food shortages, because the country doesn't produce anything else, it imports everything. So you have hyperinflation. So that's why it's really important to be uh, better informed, educated about what these things are, like hyperinflation and inflation and printing money. And the use of the phrase printing money is designed specifically to trigger th those thoughts that it immediately leads to hyperinflation. Counter example, Japan is the country with the highest debt to GDP ratio in the world, 265% debt to GDP ratio last time I checked. The problem is Japan doesn't have hyperinflation. Japan doesn't have high interest rates. Japan, if anything, suffers from deflation, from negative interest rates. Why? Because the entire debt stock of Japan is in Japanese yen. So it's a sovereign currency, unlike Zimbabwe, unlike um, Venezuela and so on. And Japan has a massive, massive productive capacity to handle any additional demand in the economy. Japan has other problems, demographic problems, social, political problems, but their problems is not a big government deficit or a big national debt or hyperinflation. So it's important to be, you know, informed about these things so that we don't get trapped by these kind of rhetorical attacks that are, you know, designed basically to shut down the conversation about a Green New Deal, about Medicare for All.